Hey everyone, welcome to this daily devotional today. We are continuing our study through the life of Jesus and we're finishing up the story of Lazarus, uh, the man who was brought back to life by Jesus. We are going to be picking up in John chapter 11 verse 38 and going through the end of the story which is verse 44. Before we dive in, let's start with a word of prayer to ask God for his guidance and to make sure our hearts are in the right place by confessing our sin. Let's pray. Lord God, we we ask you for wisdom and for discernment, for you to, to speak your truth into our hearts, that your Holy Spirit would teach us. Lord, we pray that you would give us hearts and courage to, to obey and abide by the things that you teach us. Lord, we lift up our sins and our failings in confession to you now. Lord, we praise you that you hear us and that you forgive all those who confess their sins, looking for forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Speaking of Jesus' power, we see the miracles in Jesus' life were confirming that he had the authority and power to do what he did. When he became a man... God the Son laid aside his authority, his power, and as he says and confesses that he did nothing except what the Father told him to do, and he did everything by the power, not by his own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit you and I both have, which is why Jesus said, greater things than these you will do. He was living out a life of example to us. If you come to this same situation and God leads you, you could do this raising of the dead as well. Saints, um, after Jesus, did these type of miracles. Uh, We see that that the apostles, even in in the book of Acts, raised the dead. All of that's to attest that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the Savior of the world. Let's, uh, let's pick up in verse 38 here. Then Jesus deeply moved again. Remember, he's been, he's, uh, been weeping over the death of Lazarus with Mary and Martha and the other Jews that are with him. Then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there's already a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowds standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come come out. The dead man came out, bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him go. So we see at first um, in verses 38 and 39, Jesus says, you know, remove the stone. And Martha starts kind of second-guessing Jesus. Uh, Well, what about this? What about that? She says um, just earlier, uh, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. But then I need to correct you about Uh, this thing that you're saying to do. That's not a smart thing to do. We shouldn't do that. Well, is he the son of God who has come into the world? Is he God himself standing in your midst? If so, then (laughs) don't you think that um, he has this under control? And yet, how often do you and I kind of question 
what God says to do. Oh, well, you should not um, have relations with people that you're not married to. But, but God, if you just knew my situation, how this is special. Now, I may have just stepped on some people's toes here. But we hear the clear teaching of the Word of God, and, and we generally want are, are willing to accept it until it kind of conflicts with our life. Then suddenly we, mm, God, you just don't understand my situation. You don't understand what's going on with me. Um, if you understood what was happening here, God, you would know that that that, that doesn't really apply to me or it doesn't. We, we, we do all the sorts of stuff. Um, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt submit to government. Eek. Um, all the commands in Scripture are easy to believe and follow as long as they don't <laughs> conflict with our lives. But once they do, we start second-guessing. We should trust God to know and to just listen to what He says and just do what He says. I know, it's it sounds super simple, but yet if you and I, if we were to live like that, <laughs> but we often question God. Just like Martha does here. And you, you look back at it, you, you look from a distance, and you're like, that's, that's kind of silly that she said that. But yet, you and I say very similar things. But God, this situation in my life, verse 40, Jesus says to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Seeing the glory of God, experiencing the presence of Jesus in your life is conditional if, if you believe. Um, oftentimes we, we want to say to everyone, you know, God loves everyone and, and, you know, there's forgiveness for sins. But we always need to, if, there's forgiveness for your sins if you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why we start the, the Bible study every day with confession. All right? Um, when you come into a relationship with Jesus, you do that by confessing your sin, confessing that he is Lord, and, you know, confessing means to agree. Lord, yes, I have sinned. These things I have done are wrong. I should not have done them. And then confessing Jesus, he is able to save me. Because of his death, burial, and resurrection, he has the power to save me. Just like he had the power to save Lazarus, he has the power to save us. But once we enter into this relationship with God, we continue confessing, right? It's not like you confess your sin once and then you're done and you confess your, your faith in Jesus once and you're done. No, you start a relationship where every time you sin, you confess it. That's what we should do. Um, it has been said before, keep short accounts, <laughs> right? As you sin during the day, you should be confessing them. And uh, every day, like maybe on a Bible study in the morning or whenever, you should reflect on on what things maybe you haven't confessed, what you should confess. And then you should have a more introspective, longer, deep dive um, every so often to kind of really look at the things that perhaps are blind spots. You know, asking the Lord, please reveal to me um, what is in my life that you are not pleased with. Or contrary to your word. Um, so if we believe... Our, faith, our, our seeing of God, our relationship with God is conditioned upon our faith and our submitting to him. Verses 41 through 42, um, Jesus, he prays aloud here, but notice how he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Wait, shouldn't you ask for um, Lazarus to be raised from the dead? No, no. He says, um, I have already prayed in secret, in private, and now that I'm out here in public, in order for you guys to all see and hear that uh, this comes from prayer, he prays and says, I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. Right? So he prayed in private. God answered him. 
And then he comes out and he's like, okay, well, you know, for the sake of everyone here, I'm going to pray again publicly, thanking the Lord that this is, this is the Father um, through the power of the Holy Spirit that, that is doing this, you know. It's not just me. Um, Jesus always wanted to glorify the Father, right? You see that uh, throughout his ministry. He, he points people to the Father. And that's because the Father delights to exalt the Son. And the Son delights to honor the Father. And the Trinity is all about God selflessly um, pointing others to others, <laughs> right? Uh, and so that's why you always kind of see them deferring to each other within the Godhead. Just like if you've ever seen a really good marriage, right? Where the husband and wife, they defer to each other quite a bit. You, you catch them by themselves and they're always praising the other one. They're always speaking well of the other and almost downplaying what they have done and, and uh, uh, praising what the other, the other spouse has done. So we, we see that... Uh, the battle was won in secret, in, in private prayer. If you just want to have a public ministry, but you don't have a vibrant relationship with the Lord behind the scenes, you are destined for fall. You need to win the battle in your secret prayer, in your private prayer. Um, I, I am uh, so grateful for the many of you that are praying for me and for my ministry, uh, which is becoming more and more public. Uh, I, I want to finish my race strong. I, I don't want... Uh, so many public figures have grown either arrogant um, and made terrible choices. Uh, the more public you are, the more uh, focus... Satan and his um, demons focus on leaders. I mean, they, they delight to take out leaders because it discourages so many people. And so when you, you step out in more in public ministry or when you step out like on a mission trip, you know what I'm talking about. The spiritual warfare just goes up significantly. And so that's why I, I, I desperately do need your prayers. And, and I pray every morning, you know, either before I get out of bed or I get right out of bed and, and get to the floor and start asking God for help because I need him, you know? And we need to win that battle there in the private, in the private prayer before we stand up in front of people. It's not about just uh, the Benny Hinn standing up in the front, you know, praying out there and doing all these miraculous, powerful things or, or apparent powerful things. It's about what happens in secret. And that's with Jesus and with all of us. Then Jesus, uh, we see in verse 43 through 44, when he cries out, Lazarus, come out. Jesus had the authority from the Father to raise the dead. Now, now that's not a real insightful uh, thing, but it is a very powerful takeaway from this passage. Jesus had the power to raise the dead. Jesus rose the dead, was raised, and will raise us if we believe. That is a powerful promise. And that's what he has promised to all of us, is that on that day he will raise our bodies from the graves, from the ashes, uh, from, from wherever your body has ended up, the dust from wherever you are, he will recreate your body, and it will be a resurrected body. It will be glorious. We have that great future hope. Not just to be a spirit being, hanging out with Jesus, but to have our bodies again, but perfect bodies. And that resurrection is, is for those who have trusted Jesus um, with, uh, with their lives and have dedicated their lives to him. Once again, by confessing our sins and saying, I, I'm wrong. I need to stop. Lord, help me to be changed. Let's close with a word of prayer and a prayer of blessing over you for your day. And uh, Lord, we just, we pray that you help us to become prayer warriors. People who, who are so close to you 
that when we speak to people publicly, it comes from that secret prayer, that secret prayer life with you. Lord, you say that what is done in secret, that you will honor um, us publicly. Lord, um, we pray, Lord, that we would be people of integrity and that we would trust you to, to bless us in our daily lives, to honor us in our daily lives, that we would not try to honor ourselves, but that we would let you do your work in us. Lord, I pray that you bless each person watching this video today and bless the work of their hands today, help them to accomplish um, everything they need to accomplish today. And Lord, help their focus to remain on you. We pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. God bless you all. If you have some time, you want to do some Bible studies, uh, you can check out uh, these two uh, Bible study playlists. Um, we will be starting with 2 Corinthians uh, starting next Sunday, uh, since we just completed Revelation. If you haven't watched the Revelation series, uh, you can now watch the whole thing straight through. Um, and uh, all right, I'll see you guys later. God bless you all.